Welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today, let's talk about that middle class mentality. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. And I can already hear it from a couple of you and feel it through the other side of the camera and our internet connection of uh, a little bit of offense that I'm using the term middle class mentality. Uh, probably because you feel bad a little bit about your own self and maybe you have a middle class mentality or something of that nature, or it could be something entirely different. You think I'm just a stuck up arrogant prick that, uh, <laughs> that doesn't know what he's talking about, but I will ask you to stick with me for the next, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, whatever this ends up being. And I can explain, we know that there are for lack of a better term, classes in our society. We've got our kind of lower class, and these are absolutely financial classifications. Uh, and then you've got your middle class, then you've got your upper echelon classes, and, and as far as that goes. What I didn't know, the uh, and I found out through actually a, a friend of mine, Joe Graham, that runs the 150K podcast, is that if you make $150,000 a year, you are in like the top tier of society, of American culture, U.S. culture, uh, as far as your finances go. You are like the one percenter at that point, which I thought was really interesting. However, that's not what this is about. This is about the mentality that goes along, typically, stereotypically, goes along with that kind of mindset. Now, this is not at all an attack on the values, the the um, inherent you know, value of whichever people fall into those different classes. I'm talking about what type of mentality does the middle class typically have that keeps them middle class. Now, admittedly, this is also operating on the assumption that somebody would rather be quote unquote upper class, right? Would rather, rather be more financially free, more successful with their finances than somebody in the middle class. So that's a, a basic assumption that most of us would, would desire to, to drive a, a newer car versus an older car that most of us would prefer to live in a nicer, safer neighborhood than a less safe neighborhood, you know, by, by um, that location. But I want to ask you, you know, do you have the mentality of the middle class? And what does that mean? And a lot of it has to do with how you see the world, how you see the marketplace, how you see uh, your community, how you see your ability to provide for yourself in the future and what that looks like. And a lot of the, one thing that's easily associated, or well, I guess not easily, but one thing that's commonly associated with a middle class mentality is scarcity. It is the concept of um, there's not enough resources in the world. There's not enough money. You know, the money doesn't grow on trees type of mentality of you've got to scrape and, and fight and gnaw and gnash for every little penny uh, that you have or that you may try to get. And that really is just not true because the opposite of that is people that don't have a scarcity, mon excuse me, scar scarcity mentality, they see opportunity. They see how ways that they can either become more efficient to earn more money, they can increase their prices to earn more money. Like they're, they see ways to get better and to be more productive. Another one is um, a common middle-class mentality. And this is, again, not something that's my idea. This is talked about by pretty much most of the mainstream you know, financial gurus and, and uh, experts on this area is middle-class mentality are typically kind of more on the hoarding and saving end of the spectrum. They're the ones that, you know, oh, put, put money in your savings account, make sure you've got a big savings account. And they continue to say that even when we're at record high inflation and our money is getting devalued by the day and savings accounts in banks are now earning less than like one half of 1% in your interest rate. So you were, you're literally losing like four to five to 8% on your cash money that you're saving every year versus those that are, that typically don't have a middle class mindset and mentality is they are taking that money and investing it in some form or fashion, right? And this isn't an investment podcast, so I will leave that to you to research on your own of what's, what's applicable to you. But the point being is they're not hoarding. They're not, um, they're not uh, just keeping everything, you know, stuff in the cash under the mattress type of a mentality. Um, the other is how much do you invest in yourself? Middle-class mentality is very much, you know, get a job, 
get good at that job and keep that job, right? Or, or steadily move up the ranks in that job versus somebody else that has a, a, a mentality that's wanting to get better and improve and, and increase their success. They're constantly looking how they can improve themselves. Again, with their mindset, with their attitudes, with their actions, with what they learn about, you know, who they expose themselves to and all those types of things that, you, that would fall under the self-improvement kind of category. And then the final thing about this that I, I want to mention real quickly, because it has become so prevalent and, and it, it legitimately it's a real concern just with how, especially in the US, how our government is going and you know inflation and debt and all those types of things in the economy, is whose responsibility is it to ensure your survival and success, especially down the road in the future? Is it the government's? Is it your, your bosses in the form of a pension, uh, you know, social security? Is it your parents? Is it your kids, your brothers and sisters? Is it that rich uncle? Like whose responsibility is it? And I would argue that the middle class mentality is it's, it's kind of somebody else's to a degree. Like you, you can absolutely put in the work to earn that pension and everything, but it's the expectation of through, the, through that effort, it is now that company's responsibility to pay you for the rest of your life because of your you know, 20 years of service, 40 years of service, whatever that is and whatever that looks like in the form of a pension versus somebody that is not necessarily of the middle class mentality is they, they look more at how can they invest their resources and take responsibility for that, whether that be real estate or stocks or 401ks, you know, all again, not an investment podcast, but how do they take steps while they're younger or in their middle ages uh, in the workforce and they're in their money earning years? How do they take steps to ensure that they are responsible for their own success when it comes that time to exit the, the work, workforce? Does that make sense? Again, this is absolutely not a dig on the middle class people in general. You know, I, I've told you many times that I come very much from an absolute middle class family and there's no shame in that whatsoever. My dad was a state patro st state patrooper, was worked for the <laughs> Washington State Patrol. Uh, my mom worked in administration for most of her career. And we, we were absolutely provided for. Like we pretty much went for nothing or, you know, at least that not that I knew of <laughs> growing up. But there is an absolute difference between the opportunities that were available to me and to us as a family because of the career paths that my parents chose and the mindset that we had and how we invested our time and resources, money, and all those types of things. And those are things that I am working very diligently to change in my own life, uh, especially since getting out of the military because the military is middle class. Like that, it is the, the perfect socialist microcosm construct where everything's provided for you. Um, you. You can only do what your your masters, what the government tells you to do in the form of the officers placed above you. Uh, and you're under contract, you're obligated in hopes of someday continuing your free healthcare and getting a small little pension that, oh, by the way, you will not be able to live on without some sort of other external factors or go straight to work. And I've seen so many like E9 chiefs, you know, the top rung of the enlisted structure so retire and then the next day they have to go right back to work because oh they're like oh i can't afford college for my kids or i can't afford all these types of things and they're like they just gave 20 25 years of their life to the military for this small little pension check but that's a whole nother topic to talk about and it really has to do with this middle class mentality is and again this training that i was listening to with one of the sales managers for grant cardone was talking about, and he, he uh, made the analogy of what's your operating system that you use in your brain. And it was, it, was, it was really interesting. You know, are you running on Windows? Are you running on, you know, some Android? Are you running on the, the Macintosh Apple kind of thing of, of what, what is it that you're using as your baseline that is pushing everything else out into the world, you know, into your mind and then out into the world as far as your actions that you take and, and what you go out to get because that's what controls your thoughts is that operating system, you know, and it controls your body, it controls your business, it controls your relationships and how that operating system works and whatever its baseline is, whether it's an operating system that says, I can do it, I, there, it is out there for me to get it, I'm capable of it, there's no lack of opportunity and you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, versus 
you know, I need to get a good job. I need to do everything I can to please my boss. I need to, you know, X, Y, Z, that would be commonly considered a more middle class mentality. And again, I know lots of middle class people and I know a couple, quote unquote, higher class people. Uh, there is a stark difference in how they think and how they attack problems and how they, they go about life and especially preparing for life long term. And I would argue that one is kind of better in the long term than the other because it provides more opportunities for you, for your family, for your community, your church, your organizations, your business, all those types of things. And I want to just kind of leave you with this question of, you know, are you wanting to be average? Are you wanting to, you know, make that average income, do the average things in life, uh, you know, by our, our standardization of what that means for middle class? Or are you wanting to do amazing things? Are you wanting to do things that, you know, only few people in the world get to do? And something that really struck home for me in this, and again, this was Grant Cardone at a training had made this, this kind of analogy between this. He said, you know, middle class people are some of the cheapest people that he knew. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, like, that's really interesting. You know, because here he is this multi or this billionaire and in investments and all this kind of stuff. And he goes, you know, think about this. Like if you go to a car wash, you know, a middle class person is going to, if they tip that person that drives your car at the end of the car wash at all, it'll be a buck, maybe two bucks. It says, whose life has changed by getting two bucks in a tip? Whose life has changed by getting a dollar thrown at them, you know, working at a car wash? He says, but when you're outside of that and you are successful and you have those resources, you've done those things necessary to get those, i.e. You're, you're not in the middle class anymore. He says, what if you start tipping them 100 bucks? Because you can. Like that $100 tips, like actually do something. Like that feeds people for a, for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's groceries for a week. And it was such an interesting concept and, and analogy. I'm like, man, that's, that's totally right. You know, that, that's part of it is having the resources to really actually affect change in people in that manner. Like the, obviously there are other ways to affect change and you know, volunteer time and all those types of things. But it was such a, it was a very stark analysis of the different kind of concept because that's 100% me. That, that is my mentality of like, yeah, I, I want to help this person. They are doing me a service. I go through the car wash and they're drying my car off for me and I want to tip them, but you know, what, what is that dollar doing for them? Like, cool, but man, what if you could throw them a hundred dollar bill? That'd, that'd be pretty legit. I will, I will admit one of my long-term and one of the things that I'm working for and, and one of the, I guess, charity, if you want to call it that, things that I'm hoping to be able to do or, or really striving to do and, and put myself and my family in a position to do is you see all these people driving around in these just absolute like on their last leg cars, you know, they're beat up, they're going. And I'd like to be able to, as, as I'm led to like, go buy a new car for that person. You know, it's maybe it's a struggling single mom or, or, you know, a, whatever a widower and he's on his last legs and his life has fallen apart and all you know whatever the case is i want to be able to bless somebody in the form of like hey here's this this new truck for you to help you you know get back and forth to work or whatever that is but anyway just something a little bit about me that that i think would be super cool to be able to do and obviously as you know being in a middle class and where i'm making you know fifty thousand dollars a year that's something I would never be able to do. But if I can get up and out of that to where I can say, hey, follow me to the dealership. I'm going to buy you a you know, $30,000 car, twenty five, whatever it is. Um, that would be an amazing way to bless people. So that's my take on that. Absolutely provide your feedback. If you want to throw a little nasty comments, that's okay too. Uh, I read them all. If you want to shoot me a line directly, KL at KL or Leadership, that would be appreciated as well. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, if you think there's somebody that needs to hear this, um, please uh, send this their way. I appreciate it. No matter where you're at in the world, have a fantastic afternoon. Thank you.